Hello, good afternoon everyone. So welcome to the last part of the VCF format tutorials and just a walkthrough of what is VCF about, what is varying calling, and we, today we're going to go through a few examples through a sample VCF file and to see if we check if the understanding that we have previously is actually correct. So just to refresh your memory, a VCF file is called a variant calling, variant calling, variant calls format. So it's a kind of file format that actually records the difference between genetic mutation between a sample and a references. So it, it is a much more efficient way of storing data compared to something like a BAM file, SAM file, or even a GFF file. So um, just before we go back into the VF, VCF format again, which looks somewhat like this, let's just refresh the memory a little bit on the uh, genetic mutation because I think that is crucial to understanding the the genetic variants and how we're going to represent them in the in the example later. So there are many. So the first three actually refers to single nucleotide uh, mutation or single nucleotide polymorphism, where you can have a transition where there's a swapping between the purine or pyrimidin and transversion, which is similar to transition, but there's a change in shapes. You can actually refer to the documents that I have attached down here. Uh, insertion deletion refers to a single nucleotide insertion or single nucleoside deletion from the overall reading frame. As well, the last one where a whole chunk of DNA is being added, remove, transverse or duplicate and so on and so forth. So the, the main difference I need to remember is because we're going to refer to this uh, we're going to refer back to the name over here and just to make sure that you're not confused. So again, let's, let's go back to the VCR file. A VCR file has three main parts, I'll say. The first part is the metadata, which contains things like the acronyms you're going to use later, what is the version you're on, what is the date, what is the software, and what is the filter unit that you use for such uh, mapping and comparisons. And the second part is the header line for the... Uh, the actual data which refers so you have the name of the chromosome you have the position number you have the id number of the smp you have a reference alternate uh, quality filter info and format so the, the important thing to look through here is actually the information so that will tell you about the single mutation over here what is the number of sample what is the depth that you have while the format actually refers to what is the difference between individual sample that you have actually uh, included in this uh, analysis pipeline. So let's go to our example one. So example one is a single nucleotide polymorphism, a small indel insertion or deletion, where you can see there's three different reads over here. The first one is actually a transition. If I'm not wrong, it's a transition where C is changed to a G or could be a transversion. Um, let me just put it in the description below. I forgot about it. Uh, well, the second one is actually a deletion. And the last one is insertion. And you can see that the reference refer to the um, the reference, the nucleotide in the reference genome, while the alternate refers to the actual genetic code in the sample. So these are the actual difference. A C is changed to a, a G, a TC become a T, and TC is become a TCA. So there's an insertion of A. And you can see that it's on chromosome 20, the position is on number three, as you can see here, and the second is on position number two. So number two, because they started on T, and this is position number three, because they started on the C, which is why they are they're counted directly from the first nucleotide. So there are also something like uh, this, where it's not just a single nucleotide insertion, where there is like also a small insertion, but more than one nucleotide. In this case, there's a three nucleotide insertion, where you can also see it's on chromosome 20, position three, ID uh, nothing, it doesn't map to anything. While the reference is just a C, the alternate is CTAG, which is why we actually have a three nucleotide insertion at this position, at this chromosome, and you know it passes a filter and it has a read depth of 100. So we are able to know that it is a significant change that we need to look into. So this is the slightly bigger example. So these are example three, which have six different scenarios. So let's go through it one by one. So the first one is you can see that the reference is CT, CGTGGATGCGGGAC. And the alternate is only a C. So you can actually see that the, obviously this is a deletion, which is why actually in the info over here, you can actually see that 
the SV type, the, the variant type over here is a deletion where the starting position will be 2827694 while the ending here will be 2827708 and you can see there's the SV length which is the length of difference actually 14 so it's a deletion of 14 nucleotide in the first sample so remember initially in the info there I didn't go through individually about all of the uh, format inclusion, like a little frequency and all that, because that is this is the information is very dependent on the analysis itself, and they can include things like that. And from analysis to analysis, from VCFR to VCFR, there will be some difference from one to another. So it's important that you refer to the metadata of the VCFR, otherwise you can get yourself confused because they might actually share the same name and so on. Okay, so the sec second example is uh, deletion. So a deletion here is actually uh, a huge deletion. So it's not just one, which is why you started with T and the alternate is just got deleted. So it's not very clear, you know, what exactly is the starting and endings because some of them represent it slightly differently. But you can see that on chromosome two, the position 321682, we actually have a deletion of minus 201. So you can know that there is actually a deletion of uh, 205 base pair around these situations. And it's, it's a imprecise because they can't really trace it and maybe there's not enough read that and there might be many reasons or so on. So it depends on your analysis approach and how do you want to interpret the data. It will, it will, vary, it will be very dependent on your hypothesis and approach that you go into your analysis. So the third one is actually uh, it's very similar to example two. It's actually a deletion of ALU element. So an ALU element is actually part of the transposomal family. So it's around 300 uh, base pair. So you can see that this is a deletion of an ALU element. And then it actually have a length of minus 297. So 297 uh, base pair has been deleted from the sample as compared to the references. So very similar to the next one, which is the reverse, because as you can see, there's an SV type here, it's INS. So actually that means insertion. So when we talk about uh, LU element, we actually have seen there's a deletion here and the L1 element here is actually an insertion. So in this case, it started from C at the chromosome three position 9425316. 425916 and there's an insertion of 60027. So there's a huge chunk of insertion at this position at this chromosome and so on. Okay, so the next one is actually a duplication. So as you can see from the SV type over here as well as the uh, the alternate where and chromosome 3 1 2 6 6 Five one zero zero. There's an insertion of twenty one thousand uh, one hundred length inserted at this, and there's a duplicate. Sorry, not not an insertion. There's a duplication at this area, and the length is two one one zero zero. So it started from one two six six five one zero zero to one two six eight six two zero zero. So within this length, this length, there's a duplication of gene, which is twenty one thousand in length, basically. Okay, so the last one is a tandem duplication. Uh, if you don't know what tandem duplication means, they are duplicated multiple times. Okay, so in this case, uh, it is a it's a duplication with a length of seventy six, and it started in on chromosome four and the position one eight six six five one two eight. Okay, so that's basically just uh, what that means. So uh, now it's gonna go a little bit more at once. So we're gonna introduce something called the SYTYP. Uh, so I, I usually just go for BND. So I, I'm not too sure what is the meaning of the BND, but it's break and bond maybe. So yeah, it's actually called break and replacement. So what does that mean is that if one of the chromosomes actually breaks and link with the other people, or it breaks in multiple parts and multiple parts got break with other people, uh, this would be represented by this code name, which is BNT. So let's go directly through an example. So in this case, um, let's say the in the sample, 
chromosome 2 and 17 actually got break off its original uh, location and join with chromosome 13. And it is usually very likely for like they say tumor cell or things that have undergo a lot of mutation where the whole bunch of genome got joined with the other part of the genome. So it, it formed something like that. Or maybe it doesn't happen to all the genome, but only a small part of the genome that has been damaged in a sample. Maybe again, it's a tumor situation and so on. So how do you read this is that you can see that uh, all three, of course, are from the, the, the name chromosome 2, 70, and 13 is from the reference genome. In a, in a, in a re sorry, in the reference genome, in the sample, they're just individual uh, contexts and read that get mapped back. And when you map it, you realize that one of the part, one of the context actually span from chromosome 13 to chromosome 2, and there's also another one that span from chromosome 13 to chromosome 17, and so on. So how do you read is that how do you read is that you actually look at the ID over here. You have a B and D V, V and D U and Z. Okay, so how do you link them back is that you look at the V over here in the ID and you look at the V over here on the uh, on the info over here. Okay, so you know that V is linked here and Z is also linked over here. And this is a U, this is a U, that both U will link to this. Okay, so uh, U will link to U, V will link to V, and Z will link to V. So roughly, uh, that is how you can graph the concept of you know the name. So U will link to V, and U will link to Z, something like that. It's, it's very confusing, I know, but usually you don't have to deal with this. The software will do this for you when you when you want to do the downstream analysis. But this is how you can understand it. So similar with uh, explicit partners, which is two genome break off and join with each other. So in this case, the W will link to X and then V will link to U. So very similar to how we read the one previously. You look at ID, there's a W. So you link to W. So we know chromosome 2, 3, 2, 1, 6, 8, 1. We actually get linked to this one, uh, which is chromosome 13, 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 0. Where these two will let link and these two will get linked together. So we can know that they are actually a... a partner break and and then join back to each other and so on. <laughs> okay, so there are also inversion. So inversion can be represented by two different types. So if it's a, so you can actually use the first one, which is not a break N. So a break, it will just tell you that at the chromosome 2, 3, 2, 1, 6, 8, 2, which is here, there's an inversion of a size where N is 4, 1, 2, 6, 8, 1. So in this case, from here to here, we know that the gene in the middle has been inversed because it has the SVTY, SV type of the INV. So there's an inversion here. Or you can represent it by break ends, which again is the same. A w we will link to a W down here. Uh, v will link to V. U will link to U. And X will X to X will link to X over here. So you can know that they're linked from here to here, here to here. So that's how you read the, the, the sequence and so on. Okay, don't, don't worry if you don't understand. You just have to get the concept out or usually the software will handle it for you when you want to do, a, like I want to do all the break-end inversion on this certain annotation. That will actually get, get done for you. Okay, so the last one is actually using directly on the sample. So this is a little bit more advanced because it's, it, it builds on whatever knowledge that we have previously. So in this case, we are comparing two samples, like the pre-1 privacy. There's a blood sample and a tumor sample, and they get mixed together. So we want to know uh, from the VCF data if we are able to identify. So we have identified the break end for these two sites, and we realized that in uh, we, we have found a lot of break end, explicit break ends in these situations. So uh, before I go into, uh, just to refresh your, in the format, there's a GT. So a GT is the count number. So count number is how many times it appear. And DPADJ is the uh, read depth. So that's the, the depth of the sequence. So the higher number means it's more significant and so on. Okay, so how, how do you read this is that um, you can see W will link to W, V will link to V, that U will link to U and X will link to X. So it's a, it's a break end and inversion uh, similar to what we had previously. So, but what, what is important is the second one over here. As you can see that uh, GT over here, you compare the, the first number in the blood and tumor sample 
where the blood has 0, 0, 0, 0, while the tumor has 1, 1, 1, 1. So this is very similar on the top and the bottom. So what does this mean is that in the blood sample, in a normal human cell line, there is no mutation here. We did not find any. That's why it's 0, there's no count. But in the, in the tumor sample, we have 1, 1, 1, 1, means we'll realize that this exists in the, the tumor sample, but not in the blood level. So in this case, they're all 1 because the, the read depth is the same, so it has the same amount of significance. So similar that uh, here, there's a different number that represents different way of calculating the read depth. Uh, don't pay too much attention to it. They're, they're usually very confusing. Okay, so this is how you can uh, systematically understand that how many... Uh, what kind of mutation is happening in your tumor sample and which does not happen in your normal cell line and so on. Okay, so uh, that's basically all the examples. So it's, it's a very fast run through of all the possible combination because I don't have time to prepare more, but feel free to go into the, the, the documentation yourself and there's a lot more examples that you can look through and that will give you a better idea of what is the meaning of insertion, deletion, transversions, uh, chunk duplication, tandem duplication, and so on and so forth. So just some knowledge checking question by the end of the, the video. So first of all, why is VSF necessary for the analysis of under normal and uh, to identify normal and tumor cell? So it gives you much easier overview of what is being mutated in the two cell line and make easier for you to identify which genetic region I can focus on. So maybe certain mutations are more important in the cell function and once mutate it becomes a tumor cell and it's actually how it's actually one of the way that you can discover let's say tumor markers. So if that yeah I mean it's, it's, if that thing is mutated it's most likely a tumor cell. So that's the meaning of a marker. So the second question what are the few types of genetic mutation and why insertion deletion more severe than transition? So there are a few types of genetic uh, mutation I already outlined before, above. Transition, transversion, small indel, as well as you know, all the duplication, uh, insertion, inversions, deletion, and you know, um, copy number variation and so on. Okay, so why is insertion deletion more severe than transition? So this are we are just comparing single nuclear polymorphism because insertion deletion will actually cause a frame shift while most of the transition will cause a uh, silent mutation because you know the codon are quite flexible in this kind of single nucleotide polymorphism. Depends of course again on the location of the mutation and how severe is the mutation. So okay, so the third one why is mapping necessary period to variant calling. Uh, the, the concept of variant calling is not from the sample itself, but it has to be compared to a sample. So if you don't have a sample to map it with, you can't call the variant because you don't understand what's the what's the original and what is the sample. Variant calling itself is the comparison between your sample and the reference, which is why mapping is absolutely necessary. Okay, so describe this line. So in this line, you can see uh, it's on chromosome 20, position 2, and the reference is TCG and the alternate is T. So in this case, uh, a TCG has been mutated into T, so it's a deletion of two nucleotides. So the next one, describe this line. So chromosome 20, position 2, ID. So the reference is TCG, but the alternate is TG, T, TCAG. Very similar concept, but I will not give you the answer, and I hope that you can go back to yourself and try to put in the description down below. Uh, if not, you can download this file, and you can find out the answer for yourself. Okay, so uh, that is for the video. Just a very quick recap. What is, the, what is variant calling? Finding out the difference between your reference and your sample, the benefit of variant calling format, which is an efficient way to communicate such differences, uh, how to read the VCF metadata. Remember, metadata is always followed by two hashtags of two pound sign in front, and the header of the VCF data will be single pound sign, or the data will not have any sign in, in front. Okay, so understanding the basic significance and difference in genetic mutation from the data. So genetic mutation can be a simple idea of uh, let's say you want to do association studies where a certain SMP might be related to, let's say, the genetic heritage analysis, or it can be simple as normal versus tumor cell line comparison. So that's basically all I need to say for the VCF file. Uh, if you have any question, feel free to email me, or if I make any mistake in the video, also feel free to comment down below to help other people that watch this video in the future to have an understanding of, you know, this has changed, that has changed, and I'm not correct in a certain way. 
Um, I'm, I'm done with what I have today. So thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.